started, we're going to move into the Acumark part of the webinar today. Um, so Acumark 10.3 is available right now. Um, if you're under service contract, you can upgrade by calling your local support desk. Uh, if you're not under contract, you can talk to a sales rep about uh, starting a contract so that you can take advantage of some of the new features in Acumark 10.3. For this version, we did a lot of upgrades and enhancements to our image placement capabilities. So when we talk about images, this is something that we brought in uh, with the Acumark 10.0 functionality. Um, we are able to uh, go through and um, place images on pieces. We're able to move them around, and we're able to do different things with them. So we've taken that a step further in our um, 10.3 update, but allowing you now to have better control over your grading and placement of those images. We're also letting you view a lot more things in pattern design where you can see how it's going to be placed. We can test it out in different features, um, lots of different things. We've also um, brought in different uh, options for arranging multiple images on pieces. So if we have several images on the same piece, it's now easier to layer them. Um, and as I mentioned before, in some of our um, image functions, you, or in some of our regular functions now, you can see your images. So let's take a step back and talk about the three types of images that we have in Acumark. So when we talk about placing an image, there's an option in your Create tab to place your images on your pieces. So a couple of rules to be doing that in, in case this is your first time placing an image. The um, pattern piece, if you're going to be placing uh, fabric images, needs to be a part of a model, and a fabric type needs to be assigned. So those are two essential steps beforehand to make sure that your pieces are, are placed, or fabrics are placed correctly. A fabric, as we define it, is a repeated fill in it. So this is going to fill the entire shape of your pattern piece in Acumark with the same repeating image. So you can see here on my side, I've got an image here that allows me to uh, have a single repeat of my image, and I define the size, and then it's going to fill in that image altogether. We can also have trim images, where this allows us to have a single placement of an image. Um, you can think about this for things like screen printing or embroidery images. Um, a lot of logos are, are done with this type of placement. And then we also have edge finishes, which allow us to place an image that repeats along the edge of your pattern piece, so along a straight or curved edge, you have to find the lines that it's going to be associated with when you're placing that image. Once your images are placed, you've got lots of different options to allow you to see those images on your graded sizes. So one of the changes that we made, and this is in direct response to some user feedback, we had a scaling option in our uh, image placement software before for trim images. So the logos that you saw um, on the, the top part of the, the pattern piece here. What would happen is those images, if we opted to allow it to scale, it would scale from the center of the piece out to all four sides all the time. And that was great for a lot of images, but you just wanted a little bit more control over how it scaled. So if the image was close to the neckline, I may prefer for it to scale down and away from the neckline versus having it maybe float into the neckline on some of my larger sizes. So now we've added in the option to allow you to define your trim anchor point for grading and for scaling. And this allows you as a user to have really good control over how that image is placed. You can see my eagle here uh, needs to be placed with the lower left-hand corner of my pattern piece. So I've chosen the a similar point in my trim image properties box to allow it to anchor to that point and then scale up and away uh, from that anchor point there. For my logo here that says bears, it's important to me here that it maintains a two inch measurement from my neckline for all of my sizes. So what I've done here is I've opted to have the trim anchor point in the center of the top of my image. And then I can grade and scale from that position there. So really easy to set. And this is set once, and you don't have to worry about it again. 
we, we allow for both grading and for scaling for our images. So an image can be graded where it's just moved on the pattern piece, or it can be scaled, or we can use a combination of both of those techniques to make a, a good placement for our pattern pieces. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to show you in my Axomark system a little example of how we work with our images. So here I've already taken a moment to place my image, and you'll see that there's a little dotted line in the middle of my image. So this is currently the anchor point defined for this image. I'm going to come in and use my Edit tab and choose my image properties. And just by selecting anywhere on the image, it's going to tell me all the different properties about that image so that I know my image is 8 inches by 8 inches, and I'm choosing to maintain the aspect ratio when I change my sizes. For my example, I'd like to change the trim anchor point. So I want you to watch this little dotted line on my image here. When I choose a new trim anchor point and I click OK, you'll see that that anchor moves to that associated corner point. Now if I see my image on my graded sizes, so I'm just going to show the graded nest, now you can see it's going to grade from the corner out to all of my different sizes. What I'm noticing here, though, if I back up a little bit, I'm just going to zoom out. What you're noticing here, though, is that there's a lot more space on my largest size uh, than on my smaller sizes from the corner point. So I have some other work I need to do here as well. Let's clear off my nest for a quick second. And I'm also going to employ grading to move the grading from the corner point of my shirt to the corner point of my anchor point. And what that's going to give us is a little bit of a different look to our image. Now when I see my image, you can see here that it's uh, matching up with the corners and it's growing in size. Okay, let's take a look at an individual size. I'm just going to come in and make myself a greatest size of the largest size of my, my piece. And you can see here that the image not only is a little bit larger, but it's also maintaining that position according to the corner point of my pattern piece. So it's really easy to go in and modify those, um, those points by giving them both grading and, and scaling in your pattern pieces. Okay. So heading back to our PowerPoint slides here, I have a couple more things to talk about about images. One of the things that we've been working on um, to help our customers is to have them uh, have options to go directly to digital printing from Acumark. And what this does for us is it allows you to see on each of our individual sizes here that we've been able to place and maintain the placement so that it looks uniform uh, across all of our different sizes for all of this. In addition to allowing you to keep your um, image placement, we also show those images in a lot of different functions now. So if you're walking and you're hoping that your image is placed together along the edge of your pattern piece, when you're walking your pieces, you're going to see those images so that you can verify the image placement easily. In previous versions, we had to make a marker, and it was a little bit harder to make that uh, judgment call as to if my image was going to um, match up or not. We've also been working with our different types of outputs. So talking to different customers who want to go directly to digital printing, we can go in now from our easy marking software and provide them with a PDF formatted file. And what this allows them to do is go right into their RIP software, so the raster image processing software, and it allows us to go through and easily create those files that are compatible with other systems down the line in our digital printing workflow. In addition to images, I promise we didn't only work on images for 10.3. We've added in a bunch of other options now in pattern design to make things a little bit easier. We're always concerned about usability of the software and making sure that you're not having to repeat tasks over and over again. So one of the things in talking to customers, you know, they really enjoy our clip, to, clip line function to get rid of any line extensions that are outside your pattern pieces. 
Well, what it was missing, just like all of our other functions in Acumark, was a multiple selection. So now we've allowed you to go in and select multiple lines when you're using your clip line function. Seems like a simple change, but this is something that is really powerful for users if you're using clip lines frequently. Another change that we've made was to allow you to add multiple cleats automatically, either spaced evenly along the line or distributed by a certain distance. Um, and this kind of combines the best of both worlds. Those of you familiar with some of our point functions, you may already be familiar with the ways that we're allowed to go in and place points at a certain distance or distribute it evenly along the line. So we're combining the power of that function with the power of our pleats command to allow you to place those pieces or those pleats um, along that line depending on how you would like to use the function either by a certain distance or with a certain number of pleats in mind. So in my option here, I've opted for three pleats spaced evenly. And it's going to space them evenly along both lines for me. So even though my hemline was a little bit wider, it's just going to adjust that spacing for me to make sure I have that nice, even placement. Another area we focused on for 10.3 was some of our native data file conversions, specifically with Lectra. Um, Lectra's data format um, had some challenges to it because they do store things a bit differently than Acumark. So what we did was we went and uh, looked at our functions to make sure that we could support more of their corner functions, more of their grading functions. Um, as you guys may know, Lectra uses a couple of different ways to grade their pieces. We were only supporting their straight delta grading, and now we can support um, some of their additional uh, they call it bi-directional grading in Lectra. We also work to make sure that our curve and graded notch accuracy was improved, um, making sure that those graded notches were placed in the right spots on all of the different graded sizes. If you've ever struggled with converting your native Lectra data, which is the MDL file format, I would encourage you to try it again in Acumark 10.3 because um, I think you'll be satisfied with the, uh, with the results. Moving into some of our marker making um, options, we've added on a new option in lay limits called West Skew. Um, so this is specifically for those of you laying uh, pieces on knit fabric. So a lot of times we deal with a West Skew or torque in our knits where it's not exactly following the grain line. Um, and so this allows us to define by degrees uh, what that variation is in our knit fabric and it's going to apply that to our pattern pieces to um, place them properly in the marker. And this, like I said, it's uh, put together in your lay limits file, and this allows you to go in and uh, place those automatically. This value is also recognized by Acunest, so those of you who are using automatic nesting can also take advantage of this to make sure that your markers are placed properly for any type of fabric. Another option that we've included starting with 10.3, and we will definitely be continuing with this, was we heard what you had to say, um, our downloads take a long time if you're working off of Gerbernet. Um, some of you have uh, different IT restrictions that cause it to take several hours to download our software. Now what you have, if you go out to Gerbernet for Acumar 10.3, you have the option to just download each of the parts of our Acumark software. You don't have to download the whole family DVD. We can just download Acumark, Acumet, Acuplan all individually, and that allows you to speed up that time for downloading very, uh, very much, uh, depending on your internet speeds, of course. So looking at this, Um, a lot of you, if you're only using the Acumark portion of the program or you only need a couple of components, there's no need really to download that full DVD. Um, or maybe we can let that happen overnight and just give us our Acumark right away. So, going into a couple of changes for um, Acunest, um, one of the things that we also heard from a lot of our knitwear uh, people was that there was a discrepancy with how easy marking and Acunus treated book fold or tubular markers. The folding adds piece option was always a part of easy marking, and you could control if it added a piece or not when that piece was folded. 
Acius did not have the same control and therefore would make a marker that looked a little bit different than our easy marking marker. So what we allow you to do now is in your Acumus queue, you can control whether folding a piece should add a piece, add another piece to your marker or not, just by using this little checkbox here. So that just gives you the same compatibility and the same flexibility as what you had in easy marking versus your other um, other systems in Acumus. So really easy way to, to work on um, work on this. <coughs> Excuse me. That brings us to the end of my Acumark slide. If you have any questions for me, you can type them into the chat box. I'm going to turn the presentation over to Kristen now so she can take you through the 3D um, uh, enhancements for Acumark 10.3. And then at the end, we'll open up the phone lines for some live Q&A. Kristen, do you have presenter rates? I believe so. I'm going to go ahead and click to the next slide. Um, All right. You can hear me okay? okay? Perfect. Great. Well, I am excited today to talk about the, the new updates for um, Acumark 3D for 10.3. We've got some nice enhancements that have been um, made. One of the first that we're going to discuss is the ability to work with um, graded avatars within Acumark. Um, the past, in the past, if you're wanting to visualize a 3D rendering, we would have to go in and change the base size. Um, so what we've done now is we've added in the ability to link in uh, graded avatars to your size range. This will allow you to go in and simulate multiple sizes of garments and then maintain those stitching relationships for every size within the graded nest, as well as the piece properties. So there's a couple of different ways you could um, utilize this feature. You know, you could actually go in and assign a unique size of avatar to every size within the graded nest, or um, like this slide is showing for some more small businesses that are made to um, order customers, you can actually go in and assign the same avatar to a different size, and you can check and see how that would fit. So you can utilize this depending on what your preference is. And I wanted to just share with you real quick uh, that process and how that's integrated with um, within Acumark. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And what we do is we're going to start in the model editor where we define all of the 3D information. So you'll see a new option in the 3D garment tab. You'll have the graded avatars available. And you'll just use your lookup to define what avatar you want to link in. Now, like I mentioned, this could be the same size, the same avatar for every size, or you could actually go in and specify a unique avatar for the size that's within the graded nest. It's up to um, the user and then how they want to, to fit a garment. But once that's done, um, you actually go into pattern design and look at our 2D and 3D work area. Let me open that up. Once you've gone in and opened up the model into the 3D in your preview, you will have an option to now link in the sizes. So by default, it's going to show me my base size, which in this garment is a small. But if I wanted to see the extra small, I could just put on um, that option. And I can see that all of the piece um, relationships are maintained. I'm not having to go in and uh, redefine those relations. And I have access to every size within the graded nest. So that will allow me to quickly go through and view that rendering and see how that's going to be fitting onto those custom avatars. So a great feature to allow us to um, have that visualization very quickly. Let me go back to our PowerPoint and work through a couple of the other new features that are in Acumark 3D. One of the next is an improved tension mapping function um, that's really helpful for pattern makers working with knitwear. Um, we've had a pressure, a pressure map and a tension map within our 3D software, but our new um, functionality of the dynamic tension map gives the user even greater control over tension analysis. This is going to allow the user to actually define the amount of allowable stretch for a garment, and this will help visualize how much the fabric is being stretched. So um, you can see those areas highlighted in red that have gone beyond your defined limit for what's capable for that fabric. So this is just a, a great enhancement to give that visual feedback that we're wanting with the 3D rendering. Uh, also, we have the ability now to uh, simulate with multiple garments. Um, when you're working in the Acumark system and you have um, multiple garments open, when you go to the 3D rendering, a window will pop up and it will ask you which garments that you want to render. And you'll simply select all that you want to show. And you can see here we've got a jacket, a shirt, 
and a pant, and it's simulating all of this together. And we've tested up to five models. Not that that's necessarily a limit, but we have gone up to five um, different types of models when we're testing. Um, so we've got some increased flexibility there. Um, and you'll notice here, in, even in simulation, that we're not getting any of the collisions uh, between those garments as well. So we're getting a, a great rendering of multiple garments. Another feature that we've added in is enhanced image functionality within our 3D as well. Like you mentioned earlier, we have some updates for 3D and Acumark, or for our images in Acumark 2D. We also have those updates for Acumark 3D as well. I'm going to share my screen one more time so we can take a look at some of these um, within um, the 3D simulation. And right now I have a shirt um, that's got one image here in the center. And let's say after I've got this placed, I'm not, you know, I want to maybe make some adjustments. So the image needs to be moved or scaled or rotated. We can do all that right within 3D and get that instant feedback. I'm going to go ahead and just select move. All I have to do is hover over the image. And I'm able to pick that up and move that to any location within my pattern piece. Uh, once I have it placed into the right area, I needed to do additional um, modifications like scale. I can do that as well. So maybe I've moved it up a little bit. I also want to make this image slightly larger. And um, we're going to go all out on this particular one, and we'll do rotate as well. So I'm going to select that image to rotate, and we'll just give it a slight angle. Now, the great thing about this is that now that I've made these modifications in 3D, that information can also be translated back to our 2D patterns. All I have to do is come up, and I'm going to sync those changes back um, into our 2D. And when I go into pattern design at this point, I can update that, and I'll see that that image is now changed on my pattern piece. Um, so it's a great communication and a visualization of those changes in 3D, also translating them back to 2D. And that's one of the real powers of the integration with 3D is to be able to make adjustments like this and have the information adjusted on your 2D pattern. So if we were using this for, say, something like digital printing, um, we could actually create a marker file from this um, and create output that as PDF, like you mentioned before. Also, we've added in several uh, new avatars that are available within the system. We have um, a new uh, a male and female avatar, Jill 2 and Stan 2, that actually are based on the ASTM uh, measurements for Missy size 6 for Jill and a male size 40 for Stan. Um, so this is um, uh, great to give you some additional resources with our avatars. We also have um, some new hanger avatars that are available if you want to do a hanger test for your particular garment. In addition to the new avatars, we've gone in and made um, enhancements to the avatar editing capabilities as well. Uh, before, uh, you were limited to a slider bar, and now we are able to go in and actually define a limit. Um, and you can go in, and I'll show, let's just share it real quick, and I'll show you because it's, um, it's a neat how this new function works as well. Um, when I go in, you'll see that you have a second tab for the avatar editing, and we have new posture um, adjustments as well. So I can change the position of the arms, I can move the arms forward, I can bend the arms, I can also go in and um, adjust the heel or lift the heel if I'm trying to simulate a garment that might uh, be fitted with high heels. Um, so there's lots of modifications there for the postures, as well as if I scroll down, you'll see that we have um, the, uh, the circumference measurements that I was talking about before. We were able to go in and physically type in a measurement. So if I need this to be 35 and a half precisely, I can type in that measurement and make that adjustment. Um, any of these avatars, once we get them adjusted the way we need to, they can be saved. And this would also be really helpful, this new editing capability, if you are wanting to start working with the graded sizes. Um, if you don't have access to that scanned avatar, you can go in and modify the avatars here to create what would um, complement your size range. So when you go in and want to simulate those, you'd have the library built up. And we have the new tools now to support that with the avatar editing. Um, in addition, we've got some um, nice features here to help um, indicate balance on our pattern pieces. Uh, one of the great things about Acumark is that it actually, Acumark 3D, is that it actually maintains the information from your 2D pattern. So notch information that you have built in, as well as maybe internal balance lines that you would have placed on your pattern pieces, that information is brought over into 3D so that when we're going through the simulations, you have access to that. And this new feature that we um, created called Enable Transparency will allow you to see those internal lines and, and actually see how the pattern is being balanced onto that 3D form. Um, so this is a great idea, a great way to help with fit as 
we're looking um, at the 3D rendering. And finally, I just wanted to point out a couple of the features, of, and we've talked about some of these already, that AccuMark is um, data-driven. Our 3D product is data-driven. It is going to um, take in consideration all of the information you put onto it, and we're not altering that AccuMark data to get a 3D rendering. We're actually using your 2D patterns and maintaining that. Um, so that, you know, after you do the simulation, you could, if that's fitting correctly or adjustments need to be made, we can go back to those patterns, make those, and still get a production marker. So the integrity of your patterns maintained as we go along. And it also lives in the AccuMark uh, family of products. So it's the same user interface that you're used to working with uh, in, in pattern design or easy marking or Acumus as well. And with the, the Blender um, possibilities, you know, our competitors are taking notice. Blender has a lot of functionality that um, could um, lead to uh, functionality like animation and things like that. And so it's uh, allowing us very quickly to progress in these areas. So it's, uh, it's a great um, resource that we have available to us. So with that, I am going to let Becky open everything back up for questions, and we can address those. Thanks, Kristen. I have a couple of questions that came into chat while you were presenting. Um, so I'd like to go through those first before we open up the phone lines. Sounds good. And the first question is from Deb Cushman. She's asking, can you do layers in 3D, for example, linings for swimwear? We do have the ability to do layers. Um, when you go into your model editor, you can definitely define a layer of the garment. Um, now, uh, uh, sometimes with the shaping, things like that, like a shoulder pad, we're not quite there yet. But yes, there is the ability to define layers. OK, thank you. Um, and then the next question is from Matthew. Can you place an image in 3D over a seam and have the image automatically appear and match on the corresponding pattern pieces in the 2D pattern? That's a great question. Um, the way we work on it um, in 2D as well as 3D is that image would be placed onto, let's say, both the front and the back pieces. So um, if you made an adjustment, you could visualize that. You can move that image on both sides, the front and the back. And then when you think those changes, they'll both update to those two corresponding pieces. So the process is the same in 2D and 3D. We would have that image uh, on both pattern pieces to begin with. And then as you're making your modifications, it would update onto both pieces correspondingly. And uh, one more question about the um, 3D software. Do you have avatars for babies and children? We do. We definitely do have um, those avatars. We have a youth um, girl, and we also have a baby avatar. Um, there weren't any specific enhancements for those for 10.3. Those have been around for us, but yes, we do have uh, the ability to utilize those. And they are available when you go into your model editor to select from the drop down. Okay, so I think we have a couple of other questions that are more general questions, so I, I'll take a couple of these. Uh, one question comes in from Paul. Why are there character limitations to field names and file names? That's a great question, Paul. Um, in Aftermark version 9, we did extend quite a few of our limitations on uh, field names and things like that. Sometimes it's a question of, uh, when we go over to the cutter, you know, what can the cutter uh, accommodate uh, for file names and things? Some of our older cutters can only use the shorter file names, stuff like that. Needs to maintain, um, you know, some compatibility between those. So starting with Acumark version 9, that you're now able to go to 50 characters for pattern piece names, uh, now category names and descriptions. Size names have also been increased. If you're using an alphanumeric size name, you can go up to 30 characters. Numeric size names can go to nine. Um, so if you have a specific question on the um, character limitations or field names, please um, put that into the, uh, the chat here. So the next question is um, from uh, Christine Shepard. For those of us going from Acura version 8.5 to 10.3, are there other trainings available? That's a great question. Um, when you go up, you know, so many versions uh, that you're probably skipping over about four different versions there, four different major versions there, I should say. Gerber University has classes that we created starting with version 9 
uh, for upgrade training. And these are free, self-paced classes that you can take. Um, you don't have to have Acumark loaded to take these, so you can take them from home if you need to, or uh, from a different computer if need be. Um, and this allows you to kind of see the improvements. Uh, one that I would recommend that you take, uh, Christine, going from 8.5 to 10.3, is the compatibility class. Uh, there's some changes, obviously, that I mentioned for the file name going up to version 9. So the compatibility class is always a good option to take. Um, and those of you who work with vendors that maybe still have version 8 or maybe aren't all on the same version, that's always a good class to take to make sure that you are up on um, the different things there. So there's uh, two sets of classes that you can take on Gerber University. Um, and you can also request uh, Power Hour webinars through our CAD training department. These are custom uh, classes that you can take uh, that will answer your specific question. So that's a really good option um, if you're uh, maybe a couple of weeks into your update and you've already kind of generated your own questions to have kind of that, uh, um, that you know, one on one training if you can. Now, Kristen, it looks like a couple of the questions are coming back over to you. I can um, see that. So a good question from Allison. Can you add in an avatar from Alvinon or outside vendors? Yes, that's a great question and a great point to bring up. You definitely can. Um, starting, I believe, in, in 10.2, we do support um, Alvinon, avatar, av Alvinon avatars as well as stand avatars. So yes, you do have the ability to bring in um, those outside avatars as well. Okay. And then a couple of uh, questions from Kristen. Uh, who spells her name just like you do, so that's kind of neat. Yeah. Uh, it, can bra pads be seen in lingerie or bras or camis in the Acumark 3D? Um, that is an interesting question. I have, myself have not worked with many bra pads, but here's some thoughts that I have, and we may need to follow up afterwards just to, to check. Um, but the blender itself can support 3D objects. So if you had a bra pad, we could definitely bring it in as a 3D object um, and place that in. Now, as far as the bra fitting over it, um, there isn't an interface yet within our Acumark software to work with that. But I'm sure that the capability is there within Blender. Um, so to answer your question, yes, it would be possible. Um, you would have to do some work outside of what is built into the Acumark workflow at this point. Um, and we can follow up afterwards as well if you have some more questions on that. Um, I see the next question beneath that from Kristen as well is, do the updates to 2D and 3D also update to a text measurement pages? Um, if you were to make a change to the Acumark pattern in 3D, and sync that to the 2D, it actually does physically change your measurements on your 2D piece. So uh, if you're linking that to unique PLM and saving in a SQL storage area, yes, those measurements would update there as well. All right. Um, so this might be a question for you too, Kristen. Um, another question from Matthew. If you update or change your artwork in Photoshop, do you have to relink the images in Gerber 3D, or do the images automatically update? Right now, you would have to update that. Um, but that is a great request, and it is something that we are looking into uh, for future development. But yes, right now, you would have to um, re-update those images. All right. <clears throat> so just before we open up the phone lines, I wanted to share a little bit of um, information with you as well on what you can do to familiarize yourself with the updates. I know a lot of you uh, just get you know, your software loaded from your IT people and they may not be sharing a lot of information with you. Um, but what we can do is if you're in the software library, I'm showing you my Gerber technology page um, right now. If I go into my Acumark family DVD uh, for the 10.3 release, there's a little tab down here for documents. And there's two documents that we work very hard to update um, each release called release notes and the what's new document. So release notes will go through things like our hardware specifications. If you're getting a new computer, that's where you would look to see what our minimum system requirements are and, and all that different information. There's also a list of any bugs that we fixed for, for the release in that release notes 
uh, document. So this is a good place for you to go to familiarize yourself with other things that may be fixed. So what's new is like the cream cheese frosting on the red velvet cake. This is where you would go to see all of the new bells and whistles, features, functions, enhancements, anything like that. This is written almost like a training guide, so all the information that you need to perform that function is included in the what's new along with some really pretty pictures and uh, lots of good information for you. So I would encourage you to use both of those documents when you're getting uh, ready to use a new release of software. Really familiarize yourself with the enhancements and the updates and make sure that you're familiar with everything before you get started using it. It's a really good resource for you. We always feel like nobody reads our documents anymore. All right. So getting back uh, here, I'm just going to put up a screen uh, with Kristen's and my uh, email addresses. Is should you have questions later on, um, you can go in and um, ask for uh, special help on a specific thing. I know I chatted with a couple of you uh, today about um, specific data problems, um, making sure that you have that information. It looks like we have a little bit of a longer question from Paul. Let me read this to everybody. Um, thanks for taking my question. In the model editor, when setting up model options tabs in the fabric field, as the fabric field is limited to 10 characters, it seems like uh, not spaces or special characters. We normally use alphanumeric fabric identifiers. Um, having the limitation requires creative use of abbreviations. Um, storage areas also have abbreviated names. Okay. Okay, so this is a good question um, about the limitations on file sizes. I know uh, we do have plans uh, in the future to extend field names like uh, model options and alteration data names. Uh, this requires big changes to our databases, so we're always leery of doing that because that does impact data and compatibility concerns going back and forth. Um, storage areas themselves, um, you can name with up to 30 characters um, for the version 9 uh, storage areas. So if you're using version 9 and everyone has version 9 in your environment, definitely start using those longer file names. Um, I can follow up with you, Paul, on, on any specific questions that you might have um, about uh, you know, what you can use or what you can try to make it a little bit easier to work uh, in a backward compatible format with a version 8 user. We do have some export capabilities when it comes to our data, but it's pieces and models that we export. Everything else you would need to recreate on the version 8 side going back in that direction. Right. So let me just take one more look at the chat box. I'm going to go ahead and open up the phone lines now to allow for any questions. Now, Keep in mind, we've been muted this whole time, so if your phone is not muted, we are going to hear everything that you have to say. So just keep that in mind. You may want to take a moment and mute your phone. I'm going to go ahead and open up this phone. Muted. And we can now take questions from the phone if you'd like to ask your questions here. Maybe everyone chatted with us because it's 2017 and no one wants to talk on the phone anymore. <laughs> Okay, this is, this is Catherine. So I have a question about the 3D image, um, avatars and images. Can those images, oh, 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 image avatars, can, oh, oh, oh. can those images be shared with other programs? Um, so what programs were you thinking about sharing? I mean, well, I was thinking that if it may be useful, you know, like sharing it with marketing or with sales or something like that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. When you're in the um, Acumark 3D, uh, we do have an option to create um, an image file from your rendering. So if you wanted to, you know, have um, the avatar you know, styled in a certain way with the images on the shirt and you needed to share that, yes, definitely. Um, we could create an image file for that. Um, now, the actual images themselves, um, would be maintained within the data and stored within a separate library. So uh, those could also be shared, but it would be a different path to share those. Right, but but you could create an image file. That I guess that was basically my question. Yes, okay, yes. Great. yes definitely. All of them can live outside of Acumark. <laughs> we even have an option um, 
for customers that are interested um, within our 3D, it's called Tenet. You can create a Pinterest board and it will automatically push your 3D rendering uh, to either a shared or a private board um, that you could use to share those images as well. So if you're creating um, a new board and wanted to include those, you, you could do it that way as well. So we've got a couple different options to share um, your, your renderings from AccuWork 3D. Great. So they could even be used, in essence, on a, on a technical sheet. Yep. Sure. Okay. Yeah, and if you have PLM, uh, we do have a PLM, a direct export to unique PLM as well. Okay, great. Thank you for your questions, everyone. This has been really helpful for us to see what it, what's on everyone's minds these days. All right, well, thank you everyone for attending this afternoon or this morning, depending on where you are in the world. Um, I appreciate everybody making the time to take a look at Acumark 10.3. And as I mentioned before, uh, if you're under contract and still looking to upgrade, call your local support team and they can help you out with a new license file, which you will need for 10.3, and you can download it off of Gerbernet. So I hope everyone enjoyed. Thank, Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, we will get